All right, good evening everybody. It's six o'clock and I'll call the fourth regular council meeting to order. Will the clerk state the quote of the evening? Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Attitude is a little thing that makes a big difference. Thank you. Will the clerk call the roll? Alderperson Bellinger. Here. Alderperson Decker. Here. Alderperson Feldy. She's on her way. Alderperson Heideman. Here. Alderperson Lefebvre. Here. Alderperson Mitchell. Here. Alderperson Perella. Here. Alderperson Peterson. Here. Alderperson Ramey. Here. Alderperson Rust. Present. There are nine present right now. Thank you. Folks could stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right. Elder Decker, is there a motion to approve the minutes? Thank you, Mayor. I move to approve the minutes from the third regular council meeting held on May 6, 2024. Second. That's moved and seconded. Uh, any discussions on the minutes? Seeing none, all those in favor of approving the minutes from our last meeting, state aye. Aye. Anyone opposed? Minutes are approved. Thank you. City Attorney, mayoral appointments. So the mayor submits the following appointments for your confirmation. All the person Dan Peterson to be considered for appointment to the Historic Preservation Commission and all the person Robert Lefebvre to be considered for appointment to the Redevelopment Authority. Thank you and those will lay over till our next meeting. City Clerk, anyone for public forum this evening? We have two people signed up. The first person is Christina Hepner. Right. Christina, if you want to come on down. And then if you could just state your name and address, and then you'll have five minutes. Thank you. My name is Christina Hefner, and my address is 5026 Menning Road, Sheboygan, Wisconsin, 53081. I'm super nervous, so if I apologize if I stumble over my words. You guys are a little scary. <laughs> we'll try not to be. <laughs> All right, so I appreciate the opportunity to address you this evening, and I would like to discuss a new process mandated by our city attorney, Chuck Adams, and his interpretations of the requirements of RO number 11-24-25. While my time is limited, I want to address the large amount of valuable time that local businesses such as ours have had to spend obtaining these records. Time that could have been spent bettering our community, bettering our businesses, and the betterment of our success, family, or otherwise. Instead, this time was spent addressing a process that directly impacts many small businesses and families within our community. The same small businesses and families who donate countless hours and money to help our very own citizens going through hardships or needing donations, and I'd also like to address the amount of time that the clerks downstairs have probably spent being bombarded with calls of questions regarding this process. Half of the questions in which they couldn't even answer because of lack of knowledge on the process. Two weeks ago, a few, a few food trucks were turned away from Volrath Bowl due to lack of the all of a sudden required statement of authority. And as a small business owner, I can assure you that these small businesses lost money, product, wages, and time due to this. Additionally, three or more sidewalk cafes have been unable to operate due to the city attorney's misinterpretation of the new law that they're trying to implement here, uh, specifically Craft 30, who consistently shows up for our community. I urge the Common Council and elders to personally reach out to local businesses within their respect or respective districts to understand the total cost of these losses. Out of 98 businesses who were required to obtain the statement of authority, only about half were able to successfully submit it. So on June 30th, those who did not submit it on time will not receive their licensing and permits as issuance of these license and permits are all of a sudden contingent on this new and unnecessary document. Local entrepreneurs who applied for this document as early as February still have not received it. We were just made aware of needing this document in April and this young lady here owns Bomali's and she just found out about needing this document within the last couple days. The unnecessary fees and time used to obtain this document seem like a waste. Even neighboring cities are expressing confusion over this process and wondering why Mr. Adams would like to make it even harder for small businesses in our community. And I urge the council to consider reducing and remove uh, such unnecessary barriers to support our success as a community. Like many public servants, our motivation is to enhance the enjoyment and prosperity of our city and a community as a whole. I respectfully ask the Common Council when they were made aware of these hardships imposed on local businesses, business owners, and if not at all, why? This process has been especially challenging for those with language barriers as well. 
it was hard for us and we speak plain English. I'm just going to tell you that. It was like, it was ridiculous. I encourage the council to engage with the 50% of businesses who were able to complete this process. We're available for questions after if you'd like. And better understand the difficulties we have all faced in doing so. I also ask that the city of Sheboygan make the other 50% of these businesses aware that they are in jeopardy of not receiving their license upon the expiration date due to the lack of statement of authority. Furthermore, I'd like to understand why residents were unable to email their elders from Thursday onward to discuss this matter. Thank you for your time and opportunity to address this. Oh, okay. You did great. That's over. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> That's it, right? That's all I got to do? That's all you got to right. do. Thank you. Thank you. Meredith, next person. Jim Van Akron. Thank you. Jim, if you could state your name and address. We only have five minutes. Jim Van Akron, 432 Lincoln Avenue. Uh, good evening. I speak to you tonight regarding item eight on your agenda, a resolution to authorize the city forester to apply for an Inflation Reduction Act Urban Forestry Grant. I'm the chairperson of the Sustainable Sheboygan Task Force. First, I want to compliment our city forester, Tim Bull, for initiating the application of this grant. Tim early on included citizens groups to provide input and assist in gathering information for the grant. He included the Sheboygan Rotary Club Roots Program, Restoration of Our Tree Sheboygan, and the Sustainable Sheboygan Task Force. The citizens groups provided information relevant to the grant and volunteered to assist the city in working with our community to provide education and process feedback from the community, all requirements of the grant. Secondly, I want to point out how this grant request can be a model for other city departments in implementing sustainable planning in our community. Sustainability has three major components, economic, social, and environmental. This grant covers all three. The grant requires that we target what are called disadvantaged communities. These are areas within the city that are disadvantaged, in this case, for environmental reasons. Environmental disadvantages in Sheboygan include the presence of ground level ozone air pollution and particulate matter in our, in our air. <clears throat> Sheboygan recently received an air quality grade of F from the American Lung Association. Ozone and particulate matter harm lung development in our children and it affects those with asthma and other respiratory diseases. It also increases risk of premature birth and lower birth rate. Trees simply help address these issues. As you can see, the grant addresses the economic, physical health, and natural environment of our community. In the letter of collaboration that was required for the grant, the sustainability uh, task force stated, the benefits of the grant for Sheboygan include heat mitigation, improving our air quality, assisting in stormwater management, educating the community on sustainability issues, encouraging the community to volunteer in the care of trees, and making our neighborhoods more desirable places to walk or ride bicycles. By the way, walking and ride, riding bicycles are also goals of our Complete Streets program. When the City of Sheboygan, through the Common Council, created the Sustainable Sheboygan Task Force, it defines sustainability as meeting the needs of the present without compromising the ability of future generations to meet their own needs. This grant will meet today's needs by preserving many of our ash trees and will meet the needs of future generations as the new trees that, we, that will be planted, as the new trees that will be planted mature and provide a healthier, cleaner, and more picturesque community. The Inflation Reduction Act, which funds this project, has many other opportunities for the city of Sheboygan. Let's take advantage of these opportunities to continue to meet our present needs and those of future generations. Thank you. Thank you, Jim. All right, is that it, Meredith? That's it tonight. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Sorry. No, you're good. Cool. Um, Mayor's announcements, just a few notes. Um, obviously, this coming Monday uh, is Memorial Day, so we have several community events uh, that are going on. The parade beginning at 9 a.m. Monday on May 27th, and that will be downtown Sheboygan. Following the parade, there will be a ceremony and service held at Fountain Park, uh, put on by launch at, uh, from students at Lakeland. Uh, and then later that afternoon, following the events and service at Fountain Park, there'll be another community ceremony and service at the Lao Mung American 
uh, Veterans Memorial, which will be at D-Land Park, uh, and there'll be a dedication of six new panels on the memorial as well. Um, and just a, a, a PSA announcement as well. Uh, the community feedback survey regarding the future Marina Master Plan uh, will close this Wednesday, uh, May 22nd. So if folks have ideas, uh, please submit those ideas uh, on the form. Information regarding that can be found on a variety of city websites, pages, and social media platforms as well. So thank you. Those are my announcements. And I'll talk on some other items as we get to them on the agenda. Next, uh, we'll jump into the consent agenda. Items 8 through 25. Alder Decker. Oh, there, okay. there we go. <laughs> Thank you, Mayor. I move to receive and file all ROs, receive all RCs, and adopt all resolutions and ordinances. Second. Thank you. Moved and seconded. Any discussion on any of the items regarding the consent agenda? Alder Mitchell. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, I just wanted to draw some attention to item number 19. This is something new, the quarterly reports on exit interviews that'll be coming through committee on a quarterly basis moving forward. Just wanted to encourage everybody to take a look through it. If you have not yet had time, it's gonna be a very valuable source of direct feedback and a great way to gauge what we're doing well in areas that may be in need of attention. Thank you. Thank you, Alder Mitchell. Other discussion on any of the other consent agenda items? Alder Bellinger. Thank you. Um, I just have a question on, let's see, which one is it? It is number 10. Um, I read this and reread it and read it again and read it again, and there is no dollar figure on there. I'm wondering what this costs and why it was not a, do a dollar figure included. Jordan, you want to take that or Aaron? Okay. So the DPW currently leases the VAC trucks and this, the current VAC trucks are in, um, up for ordering the future vacuum trucks. And um, in order to get on the ordering form, the company is requesting acknowledgement from council to acknowledge that they are intending to enter into an agreement in the future for when the lease... Uh, what is that five-year lease? What's the dollar amount? I don't have that. I don't have that off, off the top of my head. Jordan, you want? Okay. Good evening. Um, I'm Jordan Skiff, the wastewater superintendent. And um, essentially, this is about a $585,000 figure at this point for a brand new truck. We would get about $100,000 uh, in uh, buyback for the truck that we're currently leasing. And so all told, it would be about a $450,000 investment at this point. As Mr. Groh mentioned, um, again, this is not obligating um, the council to a certain dollar figure at this point. It's basically just letting the company know that we're serious as a community about moving in this direction so that we can get on the list to get that 18 month process started of getting the truck built. Does that answer your question? So at a future point in time, then there's gonna be a document come forth when it become, when it, the money needs to be appropriated, correct? Exactly. As our legal okay. team has pointed out, we can't ask for you to obligate future councils to a, okay. a lease like this, and so that will be forthcoming. Sure. That's much more clear. Thank you. Thank you. Other discussion regarding the consent agenda? All right. Seeing no more cues, this will be a roll call vote. All right, those items are approved. Next, we do reports of officers. RO number 112425 by the city attorney, providing background and legal issues regarding resolution number 192425 regarding corporate authority and making recommendations related thereto. Alder Decker. Thank you, Mayor. I uh, move to file. Second. Moved and seconded. Any discussion on this item? City attorney. Yeah, so this primarily relates to uh, item uh, 28 that comes up, and uh, I've got some recommendations to 
improve the resolution as it comes, uh, and so I just encourage you to consider that. Just to give a little bit of background, hopefully you had a chance to uh, read uh, the, the memo, uh, but this, this resulted from some changes in the law uh, that the state made uh, in 2022. Uh, when the state changed the law, unfortunately, the legislature made these changes without really communicating uh, these changes to either uh, cities and municipalities or to the executive branch. And so it came as somewhat as a surprise, uh, both to Department of Financial Institutions as well as to cities. So the city, uh, our office has been uh, dealing with this, working with other communities around the state, uh, trying to figure out how can we best deal with these changes uh, under the, it, and this primarily affects LLCs. It does not really affect corporations, individuals, that kind of thing. It's primarily LLCs. And it gets at the fact that the new law basically makes it so that the uh, agents of an LLC aren't necessarily authorized uh, to sign documents on behalf of that LLC. So there are a couple of different ways we can get that authorization so that we can basically protect the city. Uh, and my suggestion would be to um, amend the, the document so that, that you can do those things. We, we did ask back in February if, uh, if there was a desire for us to put something together at that time. There wasn't uh, that uh, uh, request and then this just sort of uh, uh, popped up without any, uh, without it running by our office uh, for, uh, you know, for consideration. Uh, but I do think that if we make the uh, changes suggested in my legal memo, it does uh, protect the city uh, in that regard. Thank you. Any discussion on filing this item? All right. Seeing none, this will be a voice vote. All those in favor, state aye. Aye. Any opposition? All right, that item is filed. Item 27 will be referred to the Licensing Hearing and Public Safety Committee. Next is resolution, resolution number 1924-25 by Elders Decker, Rust, and Mitchell to issue licenses who, to in, entities without statement of authority from the Wisconsin Department of Financial Institutions. Alder Decker. Uh, I ask to suspend the rules. Any objection to suspension? Seeing none, please proceed with your motion. I move to adopt the resolution. Second. Moved and seconded. Any discussion on this item? Alder Bellinger. Could I just get a reason why we're suspending the rules, please? City Administrator. There we go. Yes, uh, <clears throat> this came to our attention um, as you kind of heard some of the public testimony that um, this has had a negative impact on a substantial amount of businesses in the city and um, businesses were being turned away. I believe four food trucks were turned away um, and it's caused a number of businesses to not be able to open. Um, I think there's some <clears throat> misunderstanding or miscommunications about um, kind of how this, this issue has kind of been brought to different departments' attention. Uh, last week it came to my attention and the mayor's attention and we reached out to uh, Von Briesen to ask how they're advising communities across the state in how to implement this. Um, they, they followed up with um, this is not what anyone else that they're working with or have advised. And um, the resolution before you was drafted by them. We asked them to provide what they're having their or advising the communities that they're um, working with to how they should be operating and still fulfilling that law. Um, and it's essentially an affidavit process. So um, the goal here is to get this in place as fast as possible. So we remove this extra burden off of businesses when they're coming in for their licenses. So that's why we're requesting to have this done by waiving the rules. Thank you. Yes. Thank you. Alder Rust. Thank you, Mayor Sorensen. Uh, I think this is good. It's good to cut red tape and get rid of bureaucracy in our city and allows uh, businesses to thrive and move forward. Thank you. Yeah. Alder Decker. Yes, I just wanted to say, that, echo uh, Alder Rust's um, comments. Um, I, I, I believe that you know anything we can do to help small businesses, uh, not small, but any businesses in this community, but small businesses especially, um, the harm that this has done to some of the uh, smaller businesses um, is, has been great, and I, I think we need to do anything we can to remedy it. Thank you, Alder Decker. I'm just going to take my, my privilege as, as the, the chair uh, of, of the council to add some of my comments too. And I do want to recognize 
my assistant, Veronica Valdez, who's in the audience today, who's fielded several calls from many local businesses, from bars, restaurants, um, food trucks, from alike. Um, and, and I want to uh, uh, um, applaud the businesses that have reached out um, because we're not made aware of these situations unless you communicate to us. And I think this is a challenge, you know, from a variety of different situations. And, you know, it's it's been a, a burdensome task navigating with our staff and supporting our local businesses through this and working with the state. Um, and, I, and I appreciate, you know, Christina, thank you for speaking up and, you know, sharing your, your opinion on on this item, I think we've heard from a variety of different businesses, big and small, different, different, you know, different sizes, different services that I, that they offer, you know. And I think you know the, the the time is of the essence of this, and it's it is messy because the state has imposed new rules on us, and you know I think figuring out how we can adapt to support our local community entities is is vitally important here. Um, in any way that council can support navigating through some of this bureaucratic red tape and helping our community uh, is is very important. So. Um, I just wanted to add those input uh, as well, too. So with that, Alder Mitchell, I see you queued up. Thank you, Mayor. I'll do my best to avoid repeating. But uh, a lot of the same sentiments from my end. We talk a lot about the city wanting to be a good partner to our businesses and not an impediment. This seems like an opportunity to make sure that we are actually making good on that stated goal. I did have a question as well. I'm really sure if anybody will have an answer for this one. What is the wondering what the functional difference is between a formal policy and a change in procedure? Because this does seem like something that should have come by council, just given the scope of the impact that it has had. City administrator, and <clears throat> that was one of the part of the discussion as to why this was being done, and essentially it was the interpretation that was driving the policy. Um, so, obviously, um, city attorney doesn't necessarily dictate policy, they advise on it, um, but it was kind of done in a vein that they were under, under the understanding if they didn't follow that recommendation that they would be in violation. So, um, we wanted to bring it to council to have you make that decision then ultimately um, to follow the recommendation that most other communities are following or to continue the practice that's in place now. Thank you. Any follow-up, Alder Mitchell? Not this time. Okay, thank you. Alder Bellinger. Uh, I have heard that the city of Sheboygan is the only municipality that is doing this. Is that correct? I've, from, from, from my perspective, I've had conversations with the Department of Financial Institutions. I talked with a supervisor from the Bureau of Corporate and Customer Services, um, and information that I was provided is correct, that we've been the only city uh, that um, that has been doing it this way. And I see Alder, or excuse me, Attorney Adams has a comment as well. Yeah, we are not the only one. In fact, uh, during this, uh, the last year and a half, we've been working through the League of Wisconsin Municipalities, and basically our process was vetted with other municipal attorneys around the state. And so there are other municipalities that are doing this and yes. causing this kind of chaos. Well, I would say the municipalities aren't causing the chaos. I think the legislation that came down caused the chaos because it made significant changes to the LLC law without really preparing anyone for the changes that were coming down. Any follow-up, Alder Bellinger? No, other than that um, I'm thankful for the input from the public on this matter. Um, I've heard from several people, too. Uh, that has become overly burdensome. Um, the, the food trucks, uh, you know, is a prime example. So uh, I'm in favor of doing whatever we can to streamline and eliminate this. Um, I'm a big proponent of uh, less government is better government. So thank you. Thank you, Elder Belcher. Any other discussion on this item? All right, seeing none, this will be a roll call vote. That's approved. Next item 29, that will be sent to the Finance and Personnel Committee. Moving along to reports of committee, 
RC number 42425 by the Finance and Personnel Committee, to whom was referred direct referral resolution number 102425 by the City Administrator Casey Bradley, submitting commun communication from City Administrator Casey Bradley to Mayor Ryan Sorensen and Common Council members, providing background information on the proposed development agreement between the City of Sheboygan and Van Horn Properties of Sheboygan LLC. Alder Mitchell. Thank you, Mayor. I move to receive the IRC and file the document. Second. Moved and seconded. Any discussion on this item? Seeing none, this will be a roll call vote. Ten eyes. That's approved. Moving right along, item 31, RC number 52425 by the Finance and Personnel Committee, to whom was referred direct referral resolution number 162425 by Elder Persons Mitchell and Prella, authorizing the Harbor Center Marina Manager to offer convenience store type goods for sale and establishing a framework for such sales. Elder Mitchell. Thank you, Mayor. I move to receive the IRC and adopt the resolution. Second. Moved and seconded. Any discussion on this item? All right, seeing none, this is a roll call vote. Ten eyes. That's approved. 32, RC number 62425 by the Finance and Personnel Committee, to whom was referred direct referral resolution number 172425 by older persons Mitchell and Prella authorizing entering into amended and restated development agreement and grant agreement for Partners for Community Development and Gateway Apartments LLC regarding an affordable housing project being located at North 13th and Erie. Alder Mitchell. Move to receive the IRC and adopt the resolution. Second. Moved and seconded. Any discussion on this item? Seeing, oh, excuse me, Alder Prella. Yeah, I'm looking at exhibit, exhibit B. Can, can someone explain it to me? Oh, I, so the the 35 units, so the AMI set aside percentage, can someone please enlighten us on that or me? All right, Planning and Development Director. Yes, thank you for the question. So the AMI is um, Area Median Income. So this is a LIHTC housing credit project and so this, this is saying that basically 60, if it's at 60%, it's people that are 60% of the area median income and 30% of the, of the area median income. So this is really an affordable housing project. May I follow? follow up? And, and in that case then, um, they will have to demonstrate that. Do, does the manager um, report to the city on, on those data or not? Do we check on that? Yeah, so the, the property manager is responsible for retain, maintaining them records and we can audit at any time as well as the state uh, WIDA program as, as well will audit. Thank you, and finally, what is the timing of this project? So it's to break ground by, I believe it's August 1st, and to complete within 18 months. Thank you very much. Other discussion on this item? All right, this is a roll call vote. Ten eyes. That's approved. 33, RC number 82425 by the Finance and Personnel Committee to whom was referred direct, or excuse me, to whom was referred resolution number 152425 by Elder Persons Mitchell and Perla authorizing issuing an establishment parameters for the sale uh, not to exceed the aforementioned amount, general obligation promissory note series 2024A. Elder Mitchell. Thank you, Mayor. I move to receive the RC and adopt the resolution. Second. Moved and seconded. Any discussion on this item? Alder Mitchell. 
just an obligatory note that I would prefer this to be $500,000 less and strike the bridge, but I will not waste our time by making an amendment in that pursuit. Thank you, Alder Mitchell, for the comments. Alder Prella. Yeah, I had just a couple of questions. Um, quick questions. These are, so this is the amount, this is the amount, the total amount of 23 million, et cetera, is for the promissory notes. And I thought that maybe uh, Ehlers would be here tonight, or maybe I misunderstood to ask a couple of questions. But besides that, um, we, we do have staff here that are able to answer questions. And, and that's fine. Yeah, yeah, that's great. I just I, I thought that I I mean I understood that Ehlers would be, but. So how do we decide already the amount, the total amount for the promissory notes if we don't, without consulting with the bond counselors, or it's Ehlers that just we consult with, and if that's the case, then what is the role of the bond counselors? I'm just trying to understand how we got to, I think I know how we got to that amount, but I want to make sure that for example, the bond counselor or Ehlers, I would like to know how they got to that. How do they make sure that we can afford? City Administrator. Uh, so you'll see an analysis in the pre-sale report, um, which is uh, the third exhibit there. So that analysis goes through our existing debt, um, and then talks through the planned uses for the sizing of this particular bond. And then <clears throat> you have an analysis on how we plan to pay for it. So you'll see table one on page eight of the pre-sale report has a breakdown of all of our existing debt payments and what our debt schedule is. Um, and then you'll see less TID 16, LED 17, 18, 19, 20. Um, th those are debts that are being paid for by the TIDs themselves, so not tax dollars and a bulk of the um, projects that you'll see below are actually going to be a part of, you'll see TID 21 is 6.2 million, TID 23 is 8 million. Um, so those are costs that are already going to be covered in the TID projects that we approved prior to the, earlier this year when we created the four different TID districts. Um, and then the other ones are items that were in the capital plan for 2024. So you've got the analysis of what impact, if any, that will have um, on the overall tax rate. In uh, On page eight there, you'll see the tax rate per thousand. You'll see that um, we see that, or we're projecting that that will go down. Um, so this will just have a nominal impact on that. And that's projected in there. Obviously, um, you'll see the interest rates not in here, so we don't have the repayment schedule. Um, we'll, we have estimates on what that will be. Um, table four is the allocation of those and the estimated rate you'll see on page 11 of the pre-sale report. Any follow-up questions, Alder Perlin? Yeah, so then we will still uh, engage the bond counselors, though. Yes, so they've, they've put these together. What you're doing tonight is authorizing them to go to do the sale. And then ultimately they will do a sale of the bonds. They will bring that back for final consideration and approval. So right now, um, these numbers that you're seeing as estimates in here, on table four, they'll be finalized and we'll have the results. We could get um, better sale results. We could have worse, um, depending where the market is at the point we do sell them. So um, these are all the estimates, but you're not taking formal action. And you're not ultimately accepting the results of any sale until they come back with the actual sale results. Okay, just one more uh, little follow up. Yep. May I? That my concern in my little mind is more, I want to have more reassurance that I want to understand if the city can uh, afford it. And so I understand that there is the Moody's rating and so on. So I don't want to get into that necessarily. I just want to explain where I come from. It's more like 
yeah, maybe the bonds are going great and perfect, but I mean, they, they sell well and we get money out of it more than we expect or whatever. But I, I'm more concerned with can the city afford them? When are we going to repay them? Uh, and so on. So just for also for future reference. And that's why I, 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 was, I keep asking about the bond counselor, because for me, that is a, some sort of guarantee that a third party has looked at that and has confirmed that yes, the city is the the city's conditions are such that we can afford it. Yep. Uh, so when you have that on page twelve, you've got the tax rate that we're currently at and what our debt currently is at, and then um, that column with proposed debt that's in the orange. You've got the tax rate, the implications on a. Um, per thousand, so it, we would go up to a dollar twenty-four from a dollar eleven. Um, so thirteen cents would be the cost, and this is all prepared by Ellers. So this is their projection. Um, that's why it's on their letterhead and everything. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you. Other discussion on this item? Seeing no more cues, this is a roll call vote. Nice. That's approved. Next is RC number 232425 by the Licensing Hearing and Public Safety Committee to whom was referred resolution number 72425 by older persons Russ and Lefebvre authorizing the appropriate city officials to execute the Intergovernmental Agreement for Law Enforcement Services for the 2024 <coughs> Republican National Convention in Milwaukee between the City of Milwaukee and the City of Sheboygan. Alder Rust. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I move to receive the RC and adopt the resolution. Second. Moved and seconded. Any discussion on this item? Alder Lefebvre? No. Nope. Okay. Seeing no more cues then, this was a roll call vote. <laughs> Ten eyes. That's approved. Next is a contemplated closed session. Alder Decker. Thank you, Mayor. I move to convene in closed session under the exemption provided in <laughs> section 19.85 sub 1 sub G for conferring with legal counsel with respect to currently pending employment litigation and potential litigation related to the condemnation of property for alley repair purposes. Second. Moved and seconded. This is a roll call vote. <coughs> Thank you. Nine eyes, one abstain. All right, that's approved. We'll take a two minute break and then we'll reconvene in closed session. We'll go right in there. Yeah. I'm so sleepy. Comparatively. <laughs> Thank you.